Guess what, guess what, guess what? The porch is in much better shape again. That's nice. This is trash to be wagoned out to the curb on Tuesday, and this is for burning. So, this is, uh, I want to move these back a bit. This is getting rehomed. The drawers are inside. Hopefully sooner than later. And then that is a gift for somebody else also. So, that's nice. Oh, why don't we have a look around? It's surprisingly warm today. I mean, it's coat weather, but it's like 45, so it's maybe 50? Solidly above freezing. A little bit brisk, but not freezing at all. Uh, Saturday, so it's my usual uh, day to be out in the garden looking around at stuff. Ooh. I would like to countersink that into the wood chips. The wood chips are all doing really well. It's really nice. Um, Still haven't filled that one space. And still haven't settled in the rest of specifically these few plants that need to be settled in so they don't freeze to death. Um, if the root system freezes solid, even perennials often won't live through that. We did end up putting down a little bit more cardboard for um, kind of like covering up the walkway so the weeds don't come through. This is going to be my new method for caring for the, the walkways. And I might end up putting wood chips down over top in the long run, but right now it's just like, you know, slowly adding boxes so that there's... Um, a good weed barrier, basically. That'll reduce the weed weeding of my walkways, which is something I'm very much looking forward to not having to do. Um, everything's pretty well frozen. The tomatoes are still in the ground. I haven't found that to be much of a problem. A lot of times people feel like they have to clean up the garden like some incredible amount in order for it to be a viable place to grow things the next year, but in my experience that hasn't been that necessary overall. Um, this is the soil I was collecting out here before, and there's a wood chip pile in the middle. I have put out a couple of inquiries to see if I can purchase uh, spawn for wine caps to go ahead and get started growing those out here because that is a really exciting idea to me. I'm gonna, yeah, there we go. Um, in the meantime, the leaves are really piled up and I'm okay with that too. I find them to be really good. Something I need to try a little harder on is, now that it's cold, I think my videos have gotten a bit shakier because my hands get cold. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I will try and focus more on not having that be the case because that's not a very nice viewing experience either. Probably should have gloves on. So, yeah. This is the front yard. I have been planting seeds in for um, winter stratification. Over here, uh, you can see the little markers. So I'll hopefully be seeing some seeds coming up. I want to add, I got some magnolia seeds. And, um, I don't know where I want to end up planting out the false indigo seeds. So there's quite a few, few, few of those. Um, all kinds of stuff out here. 
can kind of see how the freeze thaw has been impacting the soil structure. It's, it's a little bit like lumpy on top. It tends to separate out the soil particles a bit more than we usually see. I'm going to step over here. But yeah, there's still a decent amount of green out here. And I'm really, really looking forward. I mean, I'm looking forward to skiing, but I'm also looking forward to spring because I have all of those hazelnuts coming in the spring that I just cannot wait to get planted out. That is super exciting for me. Super exciting for me. So we've got a lot going on out here still, though most of it's dormant. The rhubarb is probably done for the year. Onions you can harvest all year. I did adjust the alignment of these so my neighbors can get by again. Um, because this is the plant, the joe pie, that I fell into while I was uh, extracting this one piece of it. I fell over. And this is where I want to put those, uh, the porch seedlings. I want to tuck them in here. And I think this should all be pretty, yeah, this is the day to do it before it freezes again. So I'll do that even though the sun's going down. <laughs> Get that done. The asparagus is largely going dormant as well. This squigglier one is, oh wow. Look, I still have a female. Usually the females don't live that long. And also, why is there only one berry? That's very odd. This is a very old asparagus plot. It's really quite aged at this point. I think I did this about 12 years ago. I dug down a foot and a half, set the crowns the whole way down there, and then year after year piled um, mainly horse manure and a little bit of soil on top as they grew. And that is the proper method to plant asparagus. And then you harvest it early in the spring, and it has to grow out during a good chunk of the year, so once the rest of the food in the garden starts coming in later, then it's important to go ahead and let this become these great big fluffy frondy things that are, I mean this one, wow. Parts of this are like 10 foot tall. It's as tall as the roof up there, and then it, this is like lofted, so that might be 11 or 12 foot right there. So it's not like I can reach the ceiling inside of my porch. That's really tall. So that's, um, eventually I'd, so I do have quite a bit of moss growing underneath here because I found that they really like co-growing co with moss. And so when I got moss given to me, I went ahead and put it, knew right where to put it. Right up and underneath the asparagus. But I don't really particularly care for all of these um, winter cress. It's really bitter, so it might actually be bitter cress. And they seed like crazy, so they end up everywhere. They taste okay, but not particularly good. They are edible. But I'd really prefer a different type of cress. <clears throat> and we will have quite a few parsnips next year. There's I kind of messed up this seed bed of them, but all of this bright green is parsnip seeds. I've got a next generation of the hollyhock coming up here. 
so that'll be next year. And I see I've left a couple of mullins get started here. I kind of like mullin, but I don't love mullin. It's not like it's so useful. And as you can see, see I still haven't cut back the seed heads on the aster, and that may become a really big problem for me next year if I don't get to it. It is really very dispersive as plants go. The seeds end up every, every, everywhere. But... That's... That's how it goes sometimes, I guess. At least with all these wood chips, it won't take over quite as much. The sage is harvestable all year in small portions. I'd like to have more plants like that where I can come out and get good stuff off of them any time of the year, but I gotta keep looking into options like that. It's not often a ton of food this time of year at all. But if you've planned accordingly and once I have hazelnuts and other things like that, I'm as the perennials get mature enough that more and more of them are putting out a good crop, as it gets to that point out here, I'm sure I'll have a free, a full freezer, not a free fullzer, a full freezer, probably every single year out here. And I've just, you know, got to keep after it and not be so lazy and let everything go to the birds. <laughs> it's the nice thing about permaculture is if I feel lazy. It's no harm, no foul, basically. Everything's fine. Next year, in addition to, you know, the perennials continuing to grow and grow and grow, in addition to that, next year I'm going to start to pop more of those nursery bed settings all throughout the garden. So there will be more pot-in-pot -pot nursery situations going along here. I'll have some inside the fenced areas so that the ones that are a little bit more prone to be getting eaten by rabbits and deer have a little bit of protection. So here and here. That'll be big goals for next year. And then I need to decide what I'm doing with this garden plot because for the most part I just let it go to the wild violets. A lot of this like scorched tan color is just violet leaves. It's neat in the early spring when it explodes into a cute little carpet of purple flowers, but I think I need to assess how much of this in here is really producing food and how much of it is just me being happy that I don't have to do a whole lot back here to keep it in good condition. Give it a good look over. Because I do have some rutabagas that I'm hoping will become self-reseeding plants. And then over time, it'll also be interesting to see how aged the wood chips need to get before they also self-reseed. Because that's it's a goal of mine is to be able to still have self-reseeders taking every year. But I really don't want to have to weed a ton. So that's that's a tough balance that I found ground cover allows for. But I don't know enough about how the wood chips are going to interact here yet to know how the new wood chip covered places are going to deal with my desire to have tomatoes reseed everywhere and stuff like that. So, that's what we got going on out here. And I think I'm going to get started on loading loading this pile of wood chips up with little pots again. We'll go head out, just kind of look out the front. And then hopefully I'll remember Tuesday night is trash night, because it would be awfully nice to get this cart full of rubbish down to the curb. That would be really good. Much more useful space. Really, really excited about that. Okay. Happy November. It's chilly out here.
Let me know if I did better this video than last video at not shaking. I'm going to try and be more mindful of that. And, uh, sorry <laughs> if I've been screwing that up lately. Okay. I think I'm going to have a bonfire tonight. And I hope you have a good night, too. Bye.